Hey, good morning, everybody. I am so glad that you are here. If you didn't get the chance to hang out with Mr. Ben this week, I'm so sad for that too, actually, because Ben is amazing. And if you haven't had the chance to sit with him and to learn from him and to play with him and maybe even do some dancing banana with him, <laughs> if you don't know what that is, I just totally encourage you to check it out. He is so much fun and I'm really glad that you can tune in and that um, you can catch up um, for this. But yes, every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, we have Kids Church and you guys are all welcome to come. It doesn't matter if you regularly go to our church or if you're just visiting or if you just like to check us out. We'd love to have you there, okay? So it's okay to check out these videos, but it's also okay to come and hang out with us and play a lot of fun games and get to um, hear what other people think and all that stuff and see some new friends. We'd love to have you there. Okay, so we are finishing off the month with peace. What is peace? Does anybody remember? Hmm, maybe it's when you steal a toy from your brother or sister. Oh, I know. Maybe it's when you mess up your mom's kitchen right after she's cleaned it. Yeah, I think that's keeping the peace, don't you? Maybe it's pouring sand all over your dog. Hmm, that sounds pretty peaceful, doesn't it? Maybe it's getting into a huge fight and winning the argument. Is that it? I think that's it. I think I've got it, guys. Peace means getting into a huge fight and not caring about the other person and getting into a huge argument that means, like, doesn't matter what it takes to win. I'm pretty sure that's it, right? No? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure this is the way that it goes. No? Okay, well, I mean... You guys are really smart, so I'm going to have to trust you with this, but let's see what our, um, what our slideshow piece, proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Are you kidding me? That is not what we've been learning this week. It is? Are you sure? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, if, as long as you say so, I guess we'll just have to go ahead with that right? So how have you been keeping the peace this week? How have you chosen to be kind instead of maybe proving that you're right? How have you chosen to be a peacemaker this week? It's very difficult to be a peacemaker sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes it means standing up to a bully, or sometimes it means standing up for something you know is right to help someone in a bad situation, right? Okay, let's see what we've got here. Here's our memory verse for the month. Did you get to write it down this week? I hope that you did. It's such a good one. If you didn't get to write it down this week, that's okay. You can always write it, uh, write it down for the next week and just have it in your head and in your heart. And maybe mom and dad can do it with you. So let's say it together. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. And that comes from our favorite version of the Bible, nerve, right? Okay, let's see how well you know this. Are you ready? Hmm, let us do, shoot. Hmm, blank, we can to live in, hmm, I don't know. And let us, I know, take it easy and build a Lego set? with one another. That's it. That's got to be it. Hmm, let's see. Okay. Let us do all we can to live in what? Peace. That's right. And let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Nerve. Way to go, guys. I'm so proud of you. Take a minute. Pause the screen. Write it down. Put it in your room. Maybe put it on your mirror. Put it on your fridge. Put it um, in the bathroom where you brush your teeth so you can read it before you go to bed at night and when you wake up in the morning. This is such a wonderful verse to have on your heart um, when things get kind of tough and you don't maybe feel like using kind words. Okay, so I'm going to need you to do me a huge favor. So we're going to do something to kind of get the wiggles out. So stand up. Okay. Get all the wiggles out. Okay. Or do some jumping jacks or, um, I don't know. What other things do you like to do at home? 
Okay, are you ready? So now I need you to find something that you can build something with. Okay, I know that sounds very vague, but if you have Legos at home, you can use that. If you have um, paper clips, you can use that, or pasta, like dried pasta, you could use that, or you could use mini marshmallows or anything little around the house. And what you're going to do is you're going to spell out the word peace. Now, do you want to see what I use? I use sticky notes, actually. And if it's okay with mom and dad, you can use sticky notes, too. Maybe it's something you can put on one of your walls. If it's sticky notes and it's okay, make sure you get permission, though. Um, like, like I did. Do you want to see? Okay, let's see it. One sec. Here we go. Are you ready? Oh my goodness, look how fast I am. I didn't know it was that fast. Did you, are, are you guys doing it this fast? Peace. There you go. We have peace. We're learning about peace this month. And our video today is about just that, about someone becoming a peacemaker when things could have gone really, really bad. Her name is Abigail. Have you ever heard of Abigail? She's in the Old Testament. You're going to hear a story about her and a guy named David. David, yes, the David, the David that um, slayed a giant, the King David, the one that you hear all about and all the cool stories about um, in the Bible. So, there's something going to go down and David might lose his temper. And if Abigail doesn't intervene, then something's going to go wrong. And I don't know about you, but I mean, it could get pretty bad. So what is a peacemaker anyway? Do you know what a peacemaker is? Why don't you think about that while you're um, drawing out or building out your word peace? So get mom and dad to help you. If you don't know how to spell it, that's okay. But if you do, no problem. P-E-A-C-E. -E. Build it with your Legos, build it with your marshmallows, build it with your paper clips or your sticky notes. I want to see them, okay? So get mom and dad to take a picture, send it off to me, and um, I'd love to see that. Okay, so here are some questions to think about. What is a peacemaker and who were the peacemakers in this story? Okay, are you ready for this? I can't wait to see what happens with Abigail and David. Okay. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. That's right. That is a better way of saying it. We can be peacemakers. We can be part of the solution instead of arguing or fighting about um, things and not keeping the peace. But we are going to see what happens here um, with David and Abigail. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. God had promised David would be king, but for now, King Saul ruled Israel. David lived his life on the run, followed by a group of misfits who had become friends and servants. One day, they arrived in the desert of Paran, near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal, who owned 3,000 sheep. We'll set up camp here, men. At first, naval servants didn't know what to think. Too many strangers around these parts. We've had food and sheep go missing. But David's men were honorable. They didn't try to steal from the shepherds. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from any harm. Stay as long as you like, my friend. About time for sheep shearing, isn't it? Oh, yes. Nabal will hold a grand feast when it's all over. Your men have helped us, so they should share in the celebration. David called for 10 of his men and gave them a message to send to Nabal. On it. David's messengers hurried up the mountain to Nabal's estate and were brought to stand before him. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> Nabal sneered down at the men while he continued to chew on a fine leg of mutton. David says, may you live long, 
May things go well with you. <laughs> Continue. Uh, he says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well and protected them. Now please be kind to my men. Please give us any food you can find for us. Nabal leapt from his seat and hurled the mutton bone across the room. Who oh, is this David? Probably a runaway servant. <sighs> Why should I give bread and meat to a nobody? And his men who come from who knows where. <sighs> David's men returned to camp and delivered the news. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Men, put on your swords. We'll make Nabal wish he hadn't. At no time at all, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. It seemed there was no stopping a battle. But Nabal's wife, Abigail, was far wiser than her husband. A servant told her what he had done. David sent messengers asking for food, but Nabal shouted and was rude to them. Go on. The whole time we were near them, David's men were good to us. They, they were like a wall keeping us safe. You've got to do something now or terrible trouble will come. There's no time to waste. Abigail quickly directed her servants to gather supplies and put them on donkeys. 200 loaves of bread. Check. Five sheep. Check. One bushel of cooked grain. Check. 100 cakes of raisins and 200 cakes of figs. Check and check. Well, you go on ahead. I'll follow. The donkeys loaded with good food started down the mountain. Abigail got on her donkey and followed. From the valley, David and his men were approaching. Everything we've done has been worthless. I watched over this fellow's property, but he's paid me back evil for good. We'll wipe him out. <laughs> As David's anger grew, though, he spotted something along the path. A pack of donkeys. What's this? Well, it looks like they're carrying something. Food for a feast, I'd say. Behind the pack of donkeys, Abigail prepared for what lay ahead. I must stop this. The moment Abigail saw David, she slid off her donkey and fell face down on the ground before his feet. Please, let me speak. Let me take the blame for Nabal's actions. Abigail raised her eyes just enough to notice David's surprised face. He nodded. Don't pay attention to Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get to see your messengers, but I've brought a gift for you. Right now, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. Let the Lord deal with your enemies. Abigail rose to her feet. David and his men listened, surprised by the strength of her message. You fight the Lord's battle, so he will give your family line a kingdom that will last. He'll make you ruler of Israel. And when he does, you won't have a heavy load on your mind about killing people with no reason. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail took a deep breath and waited. David smiled. Give praise to the Lord. He sent you to find me. May he bless you for this. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. David's men unloaded the food that Abigail had brought. Go home in peace. I'll do what you have asked. Abigail made her way back up the hillside to her home. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard yet creative work of making peace. In the end, Nabal paid the high price for his foolish anger, but God blessed Abigail. What did you think about that? Okay, so our peacemaker, who was our peacemaker in the story? Hmm. Abigail, right. But there was someone else that helped her, right? Who intervened? That's right, one of the servants. One of the servants intervened and let her know how well David and his men had treated them while they were keeping um, care of their shepherds, or sorry, their sheep um, in the fields, right? And so this helped um, helped Abigail be a peacemaker in this situation and um, prevented David from hurting Nabal and all of his um, people, right? Isn't it amazing? She got so much courage and she did something very creative in order to make 
peace in this situation and become a peacemaker. Now, I have a little game for you to play. Let's see how well you know the story. Okay, are you ready? Um, if you are done your piece art uh, with Lego or paper clips or whatever it is that you chose to use, um, make sure to get a picture of them and share them. You can share them um, with me. You can share them on our CFMC family page and uh, we'd love to see them. Okay, so here we go. Let's play a game. Are you ready? So here's what we have to do. Here, I'll just get past this here. <clears throat> the Bible. Every time, guys. It's <laughs> oh, flip past it. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you some pictures. Here, I'll get my um, screen up too. I'm going to show you some pictures like this one. And now, what I want you to do is if the person's actions showed care for others, if they cared for somebody and they're making peace, I want you to stand up really tall and strong and give your thumbs up. Okay. If the person in the picture, I'm going to read a little something to you. If the person in the picture um, does not uh, show care for others, what I want you to do is squat down as low as you can and put your thumbs down. Okay, do you think you've got it? All right, so this is picture number one. David and his men went down to the desert of Paran near the land of a wealthy man named, do you remember? Nabal, that's right. While they were there, they helped keep Nabal's shepherds safe. Okay, so where are we at right there? Are you standing up? Do you have your thumbs up? My cat says, thumbs up. <laughs> Did you hear her? She's playing too. Okay, great job, guys. So that is definitely David taking care of the shepherds. Okay, here we go. Looks like it's Nabal and looks like one of David's servants. Okay, so one day David sent his men to ask Nabal if he would be kind and give them some food. What did Nabal do? Nabal, who was rude and mean, replied, why should I give food to them? Okay, so what do you think? Is it thumbs up or is it thumbs down? Yes, I hope you're squatted all the way to the ground. Thumbs down. This was not showing care for others, even though David had cared for his men. Okay, you ready for number three? Here we go. Uh-oh. Doesn't look very good there, right? Okay, let's see what happens. When David heard what Nabal had said, he was angry. He chose 400 men and they headed towards Nabal's home looking for a fight. Hmm. Do you think David was trying to keep the peace here? Did he maybe let his emotions take over a little bit? Yes, he was going to take matters into his own hands. So again, I hope you're squatting really low and got your thumbs down. David was not choosing to be a peacemaker in this situation. Okay, number four. Okay, so we've got Abigail here. Abigail and another servant, right? A servant told Abigail, Nabal's wife, what her husband had done. Uh-oh. Do you think maybe he should have minded his own business? What would you have done? If you had known about the situation that had happened, would you just say, hey, that's not my business and walked away? Or would you have taken it into your own hands and let someone you knew who could do something to help the situation know? What would you do? I think this man was being a peacemaker. Up in the air, just stand as tall as you can and give two thumbs up. He was doing the best he could with the power that he had because he didn't have a whole lot and letting Abigail know that um, Nabal had made a terrible decision and what was going to happen with David coming in with 400 men. It wouldn't be good for anybody if that had happened, right? Okay. Here we are again. Picture five. Okay. So there's two things going on in here, okay? So Abigail, who was wise and kind, quickly gathered food, loaded it on donkeys, and went to meet David. Abigail apologized for Nabal's meanness. What do you think? Two thumbs up? Yes, two thumbs way up. She was going out on a limb and she was risking herself by apologizing to David. And now, what does David do? Does he decide to attack anyways because he's so angry? No, he doesn't. He chooses peace as well. More thumbs up. Yay! David accepts Abigail's gift and tells her to go home in peace. And he even says, I, you've, the Lord has prevented me from doing this thing with my hands, right? He had got a little out of hand in the situation and he was going to regret it eventually, I'm sure. But 
Abigail was brave and she stood up and she said, hey, you know, remember me when you are king. So what about you? What are ways you can be a peacemaker? Do you have any ideas? Hmm. Well, when the servant told Abigail that her husband had been mean and rude to David's men, Abigail worked quickly to help make peace. What did she do to help make peace? Do you remember? No? She apologized, right? She apologized for Nabal being rude and mean. And then she gave food to David and his men, who probably needed it pretty badly, right? If Abigail hadn't done something, David and his men might have fought Nabal and his servants. People would have gotten hurt, but Abigail cared more about others, so stepped in to help make peace. She was part of the solution. She became part of the solution. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution, too. You can help others share, right? You can help others take turns. When someone isn't nice, you can say, hey, that's not nice. And like the servant, you can ask others for help when the problem is too big for you. You can talk to mom and dad. You can talk to your big brother, your big sister. You can talk to your aunt or your uncle, right? Things are too big. You have the power to talk to someone else who can help you out for sure. Okay, so this week, remember that you can show you care about others by being part of the solution. Okay, now we're going to pray. I hope to see those wonderful creations that you've made. My kitty, I don't know if you've heard her, but she keeps meowing and meowing. She's excited to see you guys too. For next week, we're meeting again on Sunday at 11 o'clock. I would love to see you there. I would love to play some games with you and um, learn more about Jesus with you. So remember this week, how can you be part of the solution? If you find yourself in a sticky situation, think about how I can be part of the solution. How can I make peace in the solution? Do I need to say sorry? Do I need to stick up for somebody? Do I need to talk to someone else who can help me with the situation and help them? Okay, so those are the things you need to think about this week. I'm going to pray for you really quick before I go. And then until next week, we'll see you again. Okay. Lord, I thank you so much for my friends. I thank you for each of them that they're learning and growing. And Lord, we thank you for all of our teachers who are learning and growing too through all of this remote learning at home. Um, I pray that you would just continue to bring a peace amongst our hearts and our minds and our homes. And Lord, that um, you would give teachers wisdom, that you would give us patience as we learn to use a different format um, for school. And I pray, Lord, that um, when we have the opportunity that we would um, use our gifts and talents that you've given us um, to help keep peace. For some of us, that might be telling a good joke. For some, that might be singing. For some, it might just be encouraging and standing up for one another. Lord, you have gifted us each in individual and unique ways, and we are so grateful for you. Help us not to be afraid to use those things. Help us to lean strong on you, Lord, and to know that you are with us all the time. We love you, Lord, and we know that keeping peace isn't so easy, but we are so grateful that you give us the strength to do these things. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. I miss you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.